Welcome to the Painter Marketing Mastermind Podcast, a show created to help painting company owners build a thriving painting business that does well over $1 million in annual revenue. I'm your host, Brandon Pierpont, founder of Painter Marketing Pros and creator of the popular PCA educational series, Learn, Do, Grow, Marketing for Painters. In each episode, I'll be sharing proven tips, strategies, and processes from leading experts in the industry on how they found success in their painting business. We will be interviewing owners of the most successful painting companies in North America and learning from their experiences. In this series titled People Make Dream Businesses, Jason Phillips of Phillips Home Improvements will be discussing how to escape contractor prison and build the painting company of your dreams. It is a six-part series. In episode one, Jason discussed key one to escaping contractor prison, true leadership in your painting company. In episode two, Jason covered key two to escaping contractor prison, building a highly effective team. In episode three, Jason deep dove into key three to escaping contractor prison, creating and implementing efficient systems. In episode four, Jason discussed how your painting company needs to market itself for long time, long term, and big time growth. In episode five, this episode, Jason will elaborate on the DISC personality assessment and how to use it to ensure you have the right people in the right seats. And in the final episode of this series, episode six, Jason will take a deep dive into motivators. How do you get everyone excited and motivated to help your painting company grow and succeed? If you want to ask Jason questions related to anything in this podcast series, you can do so on our exclusive Painter Marketing Mastermind podcast forum on Facebook. Just search for Painter Marketing Mastermind podcast forum on Facebook and request to join the group or type in the URL facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash painter marketing mastermind. Again, that URL is facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash painter marketing mastermind. There you can ask Jason questions directly by tagging him with your question. So you can see how anything discussed here applies to your particular painting company. Jason, thank you for coming back, man, for episode five here. I'm excited, Brandon, to talk about something that's near and dear to my heart today. This is your thing, Glad to be here. This is your thing. Disc personality assessment. You own this. You know, you know, you know, Brandon, as a, as a leader, as, as a business owner, there's, there's like four categories of skills that, that we need. One is what I call widget skills. And that's, you know, the, how to deliver the paint job or whatever product or service. And as you grow your business, you need to forget about that skill. Did I really just say that? (laughs) (laughs) Did, you, I really, did you really just here, say that? Here's the deal. You need to know what should be done, how it should be done. But if you really want to grow your business, hanging on to that too much is going to hold you back. And you need people. Obviously, your business needs to be excellent at delivering your promises, your quality, your service, wowing your clients, right? So the 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 other the uh, other uh, set of skills. The second one is you need personal skills, you know, like time management, adaptability, self-discipline, positive attitude. You need to be resilient and you need to live a healthy lifestyle. And those are personal skills and habits. You need business skills like financial literacy, uh, accounting, marketing, sales, strategic planning, forecasting, goal setting, et cetera. And then there's this last set, which I say is the, you know, most neglected, uh, or the last one to be thought about as as necessary is people skills, communication, relationship building, negotiation, empathy, teamwork, leadership, networking, collaboration, delegation. You know, it, it's because what happens is we go out, we work hard, we deliver a product and service, and then we get good at that. Then we start, you know, marketing and selling and building our business. And and before we know it, we have a a whole quiver full of employees. And with employees come problems, comes drama, comes conflict, okay? And comes uh, unmet expectations. And then we start realizing, man, we've got a mess of people. And, And I say this all the time, but the people is the best and the worst part of this business. And the better you get at people skills, the more you're going to get the best part of that and not have to and not have to you know uh be going round and round in the in the sinkhole with 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 the bad situations so if if there was you know Brandon if there was one thing that I could you know hop back 25 26 years ago 
in my business, not just in my business, in my life, and put one tool in my toolbox, it would be understanding uh, personality styles, behavioral styles, because that has literally been uh, a power up for my life, for me, for my leadership. And it's enabled me to, to raise up leaders and people and build teams and, and build a better family. It's made a huge, huge difference in my life. I love that. Yeah, I was I was tuned in to your live on Facebook a few nights ago with you and your wife, and you were talking about the very funny, by the way. I enjoy that. Enjoy that. It kind of reminded me of of my interaction with my wife. But uh, you were talking about the different personality styles, right? And the kind of the conflicting, um, not conflicting, but sort of polar opposite type of people. Sort of, sort of the. I don't remember exactly what they were. I know was one was dominant, and the the opposite was kind of more reserved and. As you were going through this stuff, I was like, how, how does Jason know this? Because I, I felt like I was looking at a mirror with some of the things you were saying. It was just exactly like who I am. I was like, that is kind of crazy. Felt like I could not only learn about other people, but almost about myself and how to motivate and, and improve myself through that. You know, it it's, it's almost like these assessments, they're so simple. It takes like 20 minutes, right? To, 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 to. Uh, complete an assessment, but it's like an x-ray to your soul yeah. into the inner wiring of the way God made you. And, you know, the most successful people have a high level of self-awareness. That is a universal trait of very successful people, but most people do not have a high self-awareness, myself included until, until I discovered this and literally about 10 years ago, and I'm like, why did I not know about this so much earlier in my life? And it, it, it was like you said, looking into a mirror, I'm like, well, yeah, that's, that's the way I'm built. Yeah, that's right. And you begin to recognize your, your uh, I, we could say your shortcomings or your challenges. Another way to look at it is your blind spots. And you begin to recognize your strengths. And you know, in so many areas of life, we're like, we want straight A students. Well, we're, we're not well-rounded people. Okay. And something that's well-rounded is typically pretty dull. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if we want to cut something, we want to make some progress. We want a sharp point or a sharp, a sharp edge. And when we work on our strengths, we can really, we can cut through a lot more stuff, but understanding who we are, instead of looking at, you know, I don't need to look at Brandon and and be like, oh man, I should be more like Brandon. This guy's such a, a good talker. He's so you're calm doing great, in all brother. these situations. Stay like Jason Phillips. You know? <laughs> so, you know, but understanding who we are, mm -hmm. and, and that's really, that's really the, the, the first purpose. You know, there, there's really, there's three keys to a personality assessments. Again, there's, there's all types of assessments. There's the, there's the Myers, there's the Myers Briggs, there's the Colby A index, there's the strengths finder. There's, uh, uh, there's a whole, a whole slew of them. There's the Enneagram and there's disc. Okay. I went through all of these and disc. I chose disc because one, it's easy. It's, it's easy to understand. It's easy to teach my team. Big key. Easy to teach my team. It's not okay if I'm the only one that knows this. And it's it's not just about me. It's about understanding you as well. So, you know, if we look at this, there's three things. The first thing with, with these assessments is helping, you know, begin to understand yourself, becoming more self-aware. The second thing is understanding others. You know, and, and if you're going to build a high-performing high -performing team, you need others. Again, you... If you really want to build your company, get out of contractor prison, okay, you're going to need a team of people. And if you're going to build a team of people, you better put some emphasis on people skills and leadership skills. Okay, so the first was understand yourself. The second one is understand others. And the third one is this, and this is really when the magic happens, is you can now, because you understand someone, you can, you can adapt your communication with them for better uh, for more positive interactions on a regular basis. And the the reason, Brandon, is, you know, we tend to, as people, attract 
people that are just like us. They like the same things we like. They work at the pace or they, the same, uh, you know, if, if, Hey, if, you know, if, if I'm a sports car guy, I'm probably gonna hang out with sports car guys. Right. Yeah. And whatever, whatever that is, we attract people that are like us, but we are lopsided. We are not well-rounded people. Think about if you were going to build a, you know, uh, uh, a football team and everybody on the team was the quarterback, that would be a terrible team. They could all pass really good and they could call the shots. Okay. But they couldn't block, probably couldn't catch and couldn't, you know, couldn't defend. So we have to have a well-rounded team. And that's the way that, that our company is, or even if you're in a church organization, we need well-rounded teams. And, and if you, if you're not good at people skills, then you're not going to appreciate you're not going to attract and lead and manage and develop and raise up people that are different than you. We need, I need people in my life that are going to fill in where I, my deficiencies. I'm great at starting things. I'm, I'm a driver. I'm a go-getter, but you know, I, I get bored pretty easy and I, I move on to the next thing when, when the thing I started yesterday isn't fully baked and isn't really running on autopilot. And there's, there's people that don't like to start new things, but they love to keep things going and to manage things and to tune them up. There's people that love that consistency. And, but let, let's, let, let's back up for just a second, Brandon, the, um, let's talk about what, what disc is not. Okay. Yep. And, and the, the DISC, we'll talk about what DISC means here in, here in a moment. Um, but these are assessments. They're not intelligence tests. They're, they don't measure your education. They don't measure your experience. They don't, uh, they don't measure your, your, your judging of right or wrong. Uh, and they're not even a predictor of, of, how, of, of how well you do things, uh, but just how we do them. And, but, but what DISC is, is it's a, it's a predictor of how a person will behave in a given situation. Okay. And in your business, every single role in your business encounters things over and over and over. Okay. And, you know, if, if, if I know that I need to wash my hands after going to the bathroom or else that's going to, you know, transmit germs. Why well, don't wash, you know, wash my hands. You, you learn from that. I don't want to get sick or whatever. So I'm going to wash my hands. Well, it's the same thing when, when you are, you know, you, you got this amazing SEO program running, people are finding your pages organically because of painter marketing pros online and they're calling or they're going, you know, they're getting on the phone with you and they're asking questions. And they're wanting to set an appointment with you. Those questions that get asked and the way that appointment is set, you're not going to run into very many new questions or situations there. And you want to have a person that's equipped to deal with those things. Okay. There's repetitive situations there. And, and let, let me give you, let me give you an example. Okay. This is a real world example. When, when we set an appointment, we we're going to drive, we're going to drive to your house. On, we're going to pay the tolls, pay the gas, take our time. We're going to drive to your house and, and walk around your house and evaluate everything that you need, that you need to have done or that you want to have done. We're going to bring in samples and show you colors and photos and talk you all through this. And we're going to do all of that for no charge to you. But we just ask two simple things. First, we ask that we can meet with all of the homeowners, all the owners of the property, or anybody else who, who's part of the decision-making process. Maybe that's a friend or designer or whatever, picking colors, right? And the other thing is that we, we just, we want you to set aside 60 to 90 minutes, whether we need it or not, and that you're with us the whole time. Is that fair enough? We're gonna do all this for free and that's what we want from you, okay? So yeah, well, you okay. Well, uh, yeah, we're gonna meet with, uh, you and your wife. Okay. So now my salesperson or in painter world, 
estimator. We won't talk about that. That's in residential. That's a dirty word to me. You go knock on that door, knock, knock. Okay. And, uh, someone answers the door. Let's just say, let's just say the lady answers the door, you know, and we'll just say, uh, is Miss Smith. Hey, Miss Smith. Hi, Miss Smith. I'm Jason. Thank you so much for inviting us out to your home today. Uh, now my paperwork here, Miss Smith says I'm supposed to be meeting uh, with you and your husband. Is he available? Great. Would you go grab him real quick? Okay. Think about that. If you don't have the right person with the right personality style, they will be terrified to <laughs> ask that question. <laughs> yeah. Terrified. Okay. And there's little places all in your company. Okay. How about, how about someone that's really good at serving and pleasing a, a client, but they can't ask for final payment. It terrifies them to do that. Okay. And so there's these different personality styles. And when you understand the, the styles and the personality blends that will succeed in certain roles. Okay. You can, you can start to build a team in which the differences on your team are now force multipliers rather than force diminishers. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's, it's real. So, uh, when, when, you know, and if you look at this as a, as a business owner, what is your most costly resource? Is it paint? Is it sundries? Is it marketing? What's your most costly resource? It's your people. It's your labor. It's your payroll. Okay. And, and we're going to sit there and critique, you know, every, every SEO move that, that painter marketing pros makes for us. And we're going to, you know, look through those PPC campaign campaigns for cost per click and all of that. And, and those costs pale in comparison to what we spend on payroll. We will optimize, we will optimize every gallon of paint that we can, but we don't optimize our labor force. And it, that. okay. It's, you know, if, if I'm going to cut down a tree, would I rather cut down a tree with a hatchet or an ax? Right. And having the right tool for the job. I mean, a hatchet, you can cut a tree down with a hatchet, but it's going to take a while yeah. versus an ax. Right. And it's the same thing with people. We're all a little bit different. And friends, listen to me. Your company is only as good as your people. Your yep. company is only as good as your people. And optimizing the placement, the use of your most expensive expense, your, your, your greatest expense in your company is, is vital to your, to your growth. Again, if you don't want to grow your company, if you just want to remain an owner operator with a small team, then, then this may not be, may not be for you. I would, I would beg to differ with that anyways, but, but beginning to, I, I wanted to say the word master, you don't even, you don't even have to become a master to benefit from this. You can be a novice and get immediate traction with these types of things. Okay. Um, yeah, I love that. I, I think it's so, this kind of stuff is so intimidating too, for people, you know, when you're, when you're hearing this stuff and you've never done it, I know for me, I was very intimidated. Um, you're a, uh, a human behavior consultant, right? Correct. Yes. Is that right? Yeah. And, and to me, it's just like, okay, I feel like I need to go ahead and dedicate several years of my life if I want to actually be able to take advantage of this stuff. But you're saying that you don't, that, that you can actually start to reap the benefits pretty quickly here. One, you know, one of the, there is a lot of value to be had in simply reading the assessment reports of you and your people. Yeah. Of you and your people. And, uh, you know, there's all kinds of assessment reports out there. I'm, I'm not here to sell you one today there. I do. 
I, I uh, because I was speaking at the PCA Expo, um, I the ones that I offer on my website, I put them on sale, and I I never did mark them back up, and I'm just gonna leave them. I'm just gonna leave them down for a little bit because uh, I believe they're so valuable, and they're they're uh, I think they're fifty two dollars. They're normally seventy four dollars. That's like thirty percent off. And where, or where you can, can go, people access that, Jason. Uh, if you just if you just go to jasonwphillips.bio, there's a link on there that says disk okay. assessment. Perfect. And uh, you you can grab it there. It will send you a link. You fill it out online and it emails you like this 30 page report. And I recommend getting one for you, for your spouse and for every one of your teammates. Okay. And what, you know, if you got a 10 person team, it's like 520 bucks. Trust me, it'll be some of the best money you've ever spent. And, uh, but if you read your report, start by reading your report and read it again couple days later and read it again a week later and read it again a month later and read it again six months later like literally put it put a put a reminder on your calendar and and read those of your teammates okay there is such value you will that will immediately get you to first base or a little past first base just reading the reports okay because you're going to start to recognize patterns in people you're going to see patterns in you when you look in that mirror, as Brandon said, you're going to see patterns in you. You're going to see patterns in your spouse. You're going to see patterns in your teammates. Okay. And then once you see that these patterns are predictable, okay. Once you see that it's predictable, now you can really, you can put it to use. You can Perfect. put it to use. I just looked, I just went to this. So Jason W Phillips dot B I O bio, the disc personality profile. I'm going to take that um, today after this. I'm going to have my wife take it too. So I, I want to talk about that in episode six. Maybe. Okay, we'll, we'll see what it comes back with. We'll see we'll what it psycho, comes back with. We'll psychoanalyze you. Yeah, no. exactly. <laughs> yeah, no way, Nobody when wants you're, to be psychoanalyzed. Uh, yeah, when you're, going, psychoanalyzed. when you're going through this stuff, um, yeah, it was like an x-ray. It was like an x-ray. And, and you talking about how people kind of balance you. I do have some, man, I have so much that I want to say right now from so many questions. So I, I'm going to have to try to get through it because you just dropped a lot. So one of the things that I just want to comment on, not a question, is, is I absolutely, number one, I super appreciate your focus on the big picture with people. People are expensive. Number two, you're approaching it from a different viewpoint from most people. Most people are looking at reduction in cost, right? How can they reduce their payroll? How can they reduce their expense? You're approaching it from how do you actually maximize the benefit? So you have this investment that you're making. How do you, how do you, it's a growth, more of a growth oriented approach. It's something obviously you can, you can apply to anything marketing or anything, but you're not saying, Hey, how do I reduce, reduce payroll or reduce taxes or, you know, subcontractor versus W2, what's going to be more affordable. You're saying, Hey, I have these, these costs, obviously you don't want to be irresponsible with that, but I have these, these costs. How do I actually get 20, 30% more productivity out of it? Because I treat people right. Because I understand them because I communicate with them. I motivate them. And we have a team that's all, all moving in the same direction rock stars. So if you think about this, I've got people on my team through the years. Okay. And I want you to think about your team. However, how, how many people you have on your team? Are you constantly trying to tell them to get up, to hurry up, to get things done? Or, or are you saying slow down? You know, in my company right now, we literally just had our first meeting for our quarter two for a quarter two uh, planning, right? Yesterday. And one of the topics was, uh, Jason, we need to get you out of the way because you're slowing us down in this this area and that area. <laughs> that's, that's insane. Okay, so when you get the right people, it, everybody loves to do what they were made for, Yeah. okay? When you have people in a role that they were made for, they love it and they're going to go and you're like, man, I better just get out of your way. Here's the keys, take it, run with it. Yeah. That is, so those people, I mean, are double or triple productive more than other people, right? You, you get, now you get someone who's not in the right role and you're constantly trying, then, then you end up micromanaging them, hovering over them. And now you're trying to constantly figure out what they're not doing right and calling them on all their faults and having all these accountability conversations, which I mean, those are important. Okay. But, but when you get people doing what they're made for, they are energized and there's a synergy that comes there and their eyes light up, you know, their eyes light up in those situations. 
Jason, that's so powerful, man. I feel like you're you're looking at uh, my company's org chart here or something. You're seeing like ha half and half because I, I got both going on here uh, with that. We actually have a, an operations manager who didn't didn't use DISC personality assessment, didn't use any personality assessment, but she is an incredible balance to me because I am, you talked about the D and, and you know, very um, work super hard, right? Drive super hard, tend to be pretty direct, um, to the, to the point that it can come up, come off wrong. Sometimes she is much softer. So she almost serves sometimes as a bit of a buffer, uh, between what I'm doing and what the rest of the team needs to be doing. And sometimes we get lucky. Yeah, <laughs> and, I got lucky you know, there's, on that there's like 16 basics, you know, style blends. And, uh, and sometimes, and sometimes you do get lucky, but yeah. you know, if, if we look at the, there's really four basic D I S C. Okay. Um, the, the D really stands for, um, dominance or direct and people with a really high D on the chart. That's another thing I, you can, you don't even have to read a report. Once you get pretty good at this, you can just look at the, at the bar chart and instantly know how to better interact with someone instantly. Okay. But like high D people, they're direct, they're firm, they're forceful, they're competent, they're competitive, they're decisive, and they take risks. Okay. They're also impatient. Okay. They can be offensive. <laughs> okay. no, hold on. Hold on, Jason. No, we're done with the D's. Let's move on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so then, then I really stands for influence and, and your, your people with a high I, they're, they're your socializers. They're outgoing. They're optimistic, enthusiastic. Everybody wants to be around them. They have, a, they have a lot of ideas. They love to talk. They love to talk about themselves. Okay. Um, then, then S, uh, really the, the S stands for supportive. These people are warm people. They're, they're a little slower. They're relators. They love stability. They, they, they have a, an aversion to risk. They care greatly about relationships. Okay. They can, they can also be timid. They can be, um, if, if, if their, if their S is like super high, they can, they can be taken advantage of. They don't like, you know, the high D comes in there with a new idea, you know, what's change? Well, these people are like, Ooh, Ooh, that's, that freaks them out. No, no, no change. No. You know, that's like, that's like my, my wife, you know, me, I, I want the new iPhone every year. She's like, no, no, don't take, don't take my phone. I've got it just how I want it. Please I, don't mess with my phone. Mess it all up. Yeah. So, so then, uh, so then the, the last one is C and, and C stands for, you know, conscientious, conscientious or compliant. These people are thinkers. Okay. They're, they're cautious. They're, uh, um, they, they're analyzers. They can be fault finders. If you want someone to find the fault in your system, <laughs> let us see, look at it, let us see, run it. Okay. And they, they can, they can, they can come across as being stiff. Yeah. Right. And, and every one of these has just amazing, uh, uh, uh amazing strengths, but we all have a blind side. And, uh, it, once you take a personality assessment, most everybody is a blend of two, to maybe three styles. That's what most everybody is, is a blend. And you can see these things at work, okay? Um, and if you guys wanna see uh, like the, the live stream that that uh, Brandon, that you mentioned, Brandon, uh, my wife and I, we've done two of them. We, it, we call it the Love You Long Time live stream. And we, <laughs> we walk through... <laughs> We, we've been married. We've been married a minute, you know, yeah. and, and, uh, you guys have been uh we, through it too. we, we have, we, and so we walk through uh, visually, uh, I know, I know, I know most everybody's going to be listening to this podcast on audio, right. But if you want to see something visual, see us walk through it. Um, may, maybe, uh, maybe we could post up a link to that or something. Yeah, we'll post, Cause we'll, we, we're going to post a link in the description to this one. So we can show some visuals in there, uh, that, that can also be very helpful, but again, start with, your assessment report. Now, some of these free reports, they're just going to give you your graph and maybe a description. They're not as good. Okay. They're not, I've done a ton of these. And the the one that I use and the one that's my favorite is, is the, uh, is actually the one I provide. Again, I'm not here to say anything, but get, find one and use it. That's the first thing. Find one and use it. 
this uh yeah you you run a uh you know eight plus million dollar company but your whole angle here is to sell these fifty two dollar personality assessments where you're making all no, your money. I, I mean by the by the by the time <laughs> I you know the, the system it runs kidding. on and all that I'm really it's about break even right so you it's just because I want to I really I want to this was powerful to me and I want to make a difference in the lives of people and again this this is something that's that goes well beyond business this is going to help you in every relationship in your life if you can do this now 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 not if you can if you will the other thing brandon is you know i talk to so many business owners and here's the here's the question that i get hey jason what disc profile do i need to hire for this position for for a salesperson okay and i get that and that is important but I also want to, it doesn't end there. It's kind of like saying, hey, what paint do I need to put on this surface? Well, well okay, let's talk about it. You know, what's the surface going to be used for? Um, is uh, what's the surface preparation? What are the features of the paint? Does it need to be scrubbable? Does it need to have fade resistance? You know, what type of sheen? You know, what's the time? What's the dry time? What's the recoat time? All of those things. And, and if you have those widget skills, you understand all of that that goes into it. The same thing is true about personality profiles. Yeah, you need to, you need to choose the right profile for your position, but it's not just about who to hire. It's about how to how to place them, how to lead them, how to manage, how to reward them, how to coach them, how to correct them, how to praise them, how to appreciate them, and where to promote them and where not to promote them. Okay, a lot of times we're going to take our best our best person that's maybe our, our best salesperson, and we're going to make them the sales manager. Well, the the skill set and the personality that succeeds in each of those positions is often vastly different. You know. Uh, just because you're the best painter doesn't mean you're going to be the best crew leader. Yeah. Okay. And so knowing how to, how to, how to place people and, and coach people through those things, you know, and, uh, and, you know, when, when we hire, when we hire people, we, we, uh, we have a part of our conversation is, is, Hey, look, we're so, we're so glad you're here. We believe you're the right fit for this position. And, but I want you to know this up front. We're going to have some really difficult conversations and you're going to be expected to grow and you're going to stretch. We, yeah. we just tell them that right up front and the right people, they want to grow. They're like, they'll embrace that. Oh, I can handle that. Yeah. I want to be better. Help me grow. The right people will want that. Okay. Hungry people will want that. And, you know, again, that's, you know, this whole closed mindedness or, uh, uh, or I know it all is really not part of this conversation, but you don't want people on your team who know it all. You know, I don't know, you know, I've been painting for this amount of years. Or I've been, I've led teams of this and that. Okay. Yeah. Well, if you're not, if you're not growth minded, if you're not humble, hungry, smart, coachable, you're not, you're, you're not a good team player. Yeah. Okay. And you don't just need a superstar. You need a team. You need a team that can be a superstar team. Yeah. So, uh, but you know, under, in, here's the other thing, Brandon, when, when you start to understand others and you start to communicate using their language or at their pace or at their priority, people begin to feel heard. They begin to feel understood. And when, when they feel heard and understood, they're going to trust you more. And when they trust you more, they're going to they're they're going to be more inspired, more enthusiastic about you, your company, their job, your vision, where you're going and and you're just going to get more out of them. And it's not about just extracting more from people. Okay? But as people grow and and give more, they're they're going to grow, your company's going to grow and literally everybody wins. Yeah. Everybody wins. It's kind of a it, it's you're not bleeding resources from them, you're helping them grow and they they end up enjoying it more that way. What Jason, one of the things you brought up that uh, I want to talk about is people ask you, okay, what's the best personality assessment, you know, for a, an estimator for a salesperson, right? Project consultant for you. What what's the best sales personality for for maybe a you know project manager or whatnot, right? Sales manager, and I think there are probably certain, and you can correct me if I'm wrong here, but I think there are probably certain elements that are pretty common. You know, for for a salesperson, you're probably going to want to have um, a good amount of grit, 
you know, you're probably going to want to be able to face failure and keep going because you are going to hear the word no, you are going to be rejected, things like that. But but then there are other things that are going to be very variable depending on the company. So for example, the, a lot of um, companies, uh, I'm not going to say competitors, companies in the space of painter marketing pros, they, they're hard driving, they're hard charging with their sales, right? That's their sales approach. Our approach is very relationship. It's soft. It's making sure there's a right fit for us to get a a, uh, a sales rep who's just trying to hit numbers, crank the phone, you know, in and out that that's going to actually cause a lot of disruption for us. Whereas other companies, it'll be, it, it'll make sense. I think the same applies to painting companies too. And, and to really every position, what's your thoughts on that? Well, you, you hit a key, you hit a key part there is, is we have to know the sales process. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're, if you are, um, if your sales process is long and drawn out. Let's say you're doing huge projects that are like hundred thousand dollar projects. Okay, you're probably going to need multiple visits, a lot of follow through. Okay, and you're going to need someone that's slightly different than 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 what we have. What we we have at my company is short cycle sales. Everybody, I don't want to say everybody. The majority of people that we meet with make a decision within three days to buy from someone. Okay. To buy from someone. And, and I know that based on industry statistics, if they don't buy from me, there's a high priority that they're going to um, waste their money with an unscrupulous company or on subpar work. Okay. So I have an urgency to rescue them. They're going to, they're going to bite somewhere and I have a red, we, we better rescue them. So I need someone who can, who can, uh, a certain profile that's, that's going to work with urgency. That's going to build, that's going to build, you know, uh, trust rapport. Okay. And not be afraid to ask for the sale. But again, it's, you have to look at your sales process. Do you even have a sales process, which is a whole nother question. Okay. But if, 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 if there's a lot of design, if there's a lot of design decisions and it takes multiple visits and, and, and a, a lot of time, then your, your, your sales profile, the, the, the personality profile might be slightly different than mine. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so uh, it really just, I, I don't want to tell you, here's what you need, because I don't know what you need, because what you need may be different than what I need, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Okay. 100%. But, but, but pretty much all of them are going to need, uh, uh, let's just say a D that's above the middle line. Yeah. Yeah. I gotta, gotta go out and get it. Th those particular people need to be a bit hungry. Hunters. Uh, Hunters. Uh, I like your shirt, by the way. You Thank you. Some paint on yourself, but it was a very nice white shirt before all that paint got spilled on it. Well, you know, I can't paint, so I got to make it look yeah. like I can paint, so I can just yeah. fit in with all the cool guys. I love it, man. So I, I uh, you said something interesting. I've been meaning to circle back to it because I, I really want to dive into this. You talked about how one of the big benefits of of learning DISC and everyone taking a DISC personality assessment is actually not just for you as the owner or the person running the business to understand it and how to interact with everyone and motivate and all the things you need to do. But actually it's important for all your team members to understand it. I am curious what you expect or what you hope. So I, let's say that everyone in the organization takes this. Now everyone knows, I don't know if you publicize it, if everyone knows what happens next, how do they actually incorporate that? Okay. That's a great question. Ultimately you want the, um, understanding at least the basic understanding uh, and, and language of DISC to be throughout your whole company. Okay. And this part of your culture, this is, yeah, it's, it's, yeah this isn't just, you should start with the managers or leaders, start with you, but, and as you get, you know, you don't have to be an expert. You just need to be a little ahead of your people. Okay. Get a, you know, get to second base and then, and then put them up to bat. Right. But give them their assessment and, and they, they need to know themselves. They need to know their manager. They need to know you. Okay. You can't just overwhelm them with everybody's profile at once. Right. So what you just create a little <laughs> rollout plan. Okay. You create a little change plan. all hey, of guys, your interactions. Yeah. So here's what we're going to do first. Everybody's going to take their assessment. Okay. And I just want you to read it. And then I want you to read it again. 
And some, one of the things that we would do is, is we would sit around or in, in the early days, okay, we would sit around with, with our managers or our departments and um, at, at the table, and we would pick one little section of the assessment report and we would read our section to the team and, and say, do you see that in me? There were, or, and there were, or we'd say, do you see that in yourself? And we would have a discussion and you just see light bulbs start mm -hmm. going off. You, like a round oh, table. Yeah, it's a round table. And we, we would call them lunch and learns. We still call them lunch and learns when we do little things like this. I thought a lunch and, and learns is, is just you listen to a PowerPoint and they just kind of talk at you the whole time. This seems no, well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we do we do audio books as lunch and learns too. Oh, that's okay. Neat. But but just anytime we can give them snippets and tidbits, hey, we've all got to eat lunch. Why don't we just kind of do something a little interactive while we're doing it? Oh, and man. and so and then once they really start understanding themselves. The, you know, you want them to understand the people they work next to. You want them to understand the, uh, uh, the, their, their leader, their manager, and the people that report to them. But you can't just flood them information. You need to start and have them read their profile several times and tell them, hey, take this home after you've read it, read it tonight, then give it to your spouse and have your spouse read it and see and give you feedback and ask you questions. Okay. And, 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 okay, here's, here's the thing. I, the first time I, R Rochelle gave it to my wife, I, I didn't give her the assessment. I gave her my assessment. And she's like reading it. She's like, I didn't need a report to tell them all this about you. I already knew all this about you. I already knew it. Okay. But, but to me, okay. It, I needed, to, I needed to hear this about me. It was things that I kind of felt and knew subconsciously, but had not really discussed in my own brain about who I was and how I was created. Okay, so it, because I was just blind to some of those things. Yeah, for anyone who who has not taken this assessment, who has not listened to to Jason and Rochelle's live, listen to it. Go to that that portion of it because it it was a very weird experience for me. I felt like Jason was, was like reaching through the computer and being like, "Hey, man, who here's here's exactly who you are and why you're that way." So it it was enlightening to say the least. I had the same experience. I think most people have the same experience. Uh, when, when, when they do it, you know, so if we talk about just for a second, Brandon, like, you know, if, if the different people on your team, let's just talk about the ways to appreciate them. And again, personality profiles is not just about creating all these warm and fuzzy environments. It's not it, but it is a powerful tool in building culture and building team and really driving performance, really driving performance. But, you know, if you have someone that's a high, that's a dominant person, you know, how can you, how can you recognize them? Well, one is to recognize when they've done a job well. Wow, you won. You did it. Oh my goodness, you did it. You're a champion. That really speaks to those people. And those people, they want to grow. And, and they're constantly in competition with themselves. Now, the high I or influential people, okay, the, the uh, socializers, you know, what, you know what they love? They love flexibility because they hate rules. <laughs> they hate rules. Okay. Um, but the, the give them flexibility in their schedule, make things fun at work, have a monthly potluck at work. Okay. They will love that. Surprise them with, you know, donuts occasionally. They love the unexpected. They thrive on the unexpected. Now, if you've got the, someone that's a high S on your team that may be a little slower paced, warm personality, sometimes soft-spoken, not always soft-spoken, okay? But you know what they value? They value time. Take them to coffee. Take them to lunch. Sit down and, and listen to them. They really value connection and relationships. Now, you know, another thing you could do is, is uh, write a handwritten note. You know, I... I uh, occasionally I write handwritten notes and, and a while back, you know, I, I wrote one and to, to one of our ladies, uh, she, it was a job well done. I was, I was thanking her and, you know, after I, she's oh thank you for the card. And I said, I said, well, I hope you, you know, I'm just glad you could read it because I pretty much write in hieroglyphics. I write with my <laughs> thumbs now. Right. <laughs> and I said, so honestly, it's pretty painful just to write things out anymore. She said, that makes it mean all the much more to me that I did that. Right. Yeah. And so it wasn't that it, she didn't care that my handwriting wasn't good. She, she cared that I, that I did it in spite of my handwriting. Yeah, so th those, those little effort. things. 
Yeah. The time and the effort. Now, now if you've got your high C type personality, those people, they, they've got a lot of, they've got ideas. You, you need to listen to their ideas and they want, you know, financial incentives and just simple. Thank you. Just a simple thank you goes a long way with those people. It's one of the takeaways I'm getting here. Obviously, knowing people on a deep level, you can interact with them a bit differently. Another another way to kind of, again, correct me if I'm off here, but it seems a, sort of a hack, right? A hack to probably improve things immediately, even if you don't really um, understand this stuff yet. You, not, not everyone has taken the test. You haven't really dove in yet. You could just start to have a mix of this stuff. You know, if you usually bring in food and that's your big thing, well, you can also start spending spending time with people. You start doing the handwritten note. If you kind of sprinkle all of this, you're at least going to ping all these different personality types and and probably everyone's going to really appreciate at least one of the things that you're doing. And those those assessment reports will actually tell others how to interact with you. Hmm. There's a section in there, how to best interact with with this person. That is neat. Yeah, uh, that is it. really neat. I, I need my wife to take it so that I can do better. Yes. Yeah, yep. Yeah. <laughs> I need to do better. So we're, this will help. It's, 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 it's powerful. You can really use this to power up your life, to power up your relationships, to become a better leader, to become a better business owner. And when you can really empower people, you're going to uh, increase your odds of success. Okay. And, and you're going to have, I'm not going to say you're not going to have people problems, but you're going to be better equipped to deal with them and to recognize them and to, uh, put people in positions where they have a higher uh, chances of winning or succeeding and staying in that position, right? And you I mean you put you put the wrong personality in this particular job, they're going to burn out really quick and quit. Now, guess what? They've got to start over in their job search, and you've got to start over. You've lost traction. Maybe maybe you lost a season because you had the wrong person, and and that opportunity isn't going to come back till next spring. Yeah. Wow. You just lost your opportunity, not till you hire the next person, but till you, till the next year. Yeah, okay. Business is exponential growth. So that, that is not good. You know, and, and I, I one of the common ones I hear from, from guys is, uh, uh, Jason, my, my salesperson, I think I need a new salesperson. Um, and I'll just start asking them questions and about the salesperson will tell me how you're, you know, tell me how you're formulating your price. What does your sales process look you know, how, how often are they, you know, uh, converting on the spot and asking questions. And, and then I just start realizing that the, that the only sales this person is getting is the ones that are given to them by the customer, not the ones that they're asking for because yeah. they're, 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 they have a good person in a wrong seat on their, on, on their bus at their company. Okay. And that's a hard pill to swallow when you realize you've got the wrong the the right person is a great person, but you've got them in the wrong seat on your team. And yep. you know, you've got to make a change. It takes a lot of courage to make that change. Like if, if you're feeding all these expensive leads to a salesperson and, or an estimator, if you call them that, and they're not closing any of them. Okay. There's a good chance. There's a number of things that can go wrong, but there's a great chance that you have the wrong person in that role. But maybe they are fit for another role potentially. Another or role. Maybe they're not. Or maybe they're not. The so so another thing I want to I want to kind of dive into because it it's I'm not sure what the answer to this is. So I want to get an answer. So I, I've mentioned him before. I, I'm a big follower of Alex Hermosi, wrote hundred million dollar offers, guy's a an all-star uh, entrepreneur, podcaster. Um, love him, gives away a lot of free content. But he talks about most successful, pretty much all successful people are are hard drivers and they demand a lot. So they demand excellence. They demand rock stars. Doesn't mean they all need to be high D type people. That would be a really, really uh, uh, misfunctioning, you know, bad functioning environment, but they, they demand rock stars. So how do you interact with people? How do you incorporate disc? How do you make sure that, that, that you're not just being domineering, you know, which isn't going to work for a lot of people, but still command excellence from every member of your team? That's a great question. You know, one of the things I start with being up front, I say, guys, first of all, I'm fast paced 
And you're going to find me very demanding. You're also going to find me, I hope, very loving as well at the same time. And I have conversations about the, here's how I am. And, you know, I understand that, you know, is I'm, I'm reading your disc profile is, are these things about you true? Okay, well, here's some possible friction points we may have. And here's how we're going to work through these. And wow, that's awesome. I want you to know that sometimes I have a tendency to, you know, to wh whatever run over people. And I want you to have the freedom to tell me if I'm moving too fast for you. I want I want you to have the freedom to tell me if I've given you too much or if you're drowning or if you're overloaded, because I, I care about you. I want you to succeed in this position and I need you to succeed in this position. But a lot of times, I mean, I've got blind sides and, and, and if I'm stressed out, I may, I'm not trying to make excuses for myself, but I may end up communicating in this demanding, short tempered way and, and it's okay. You can call me on the carpet for that. Okay. You're not going to get fired for that. You're not getting in trouble for that. I need, cause I need to be on my best. You need me. This whole team needs me to be at my best. Yeah. So that we have to create, I, I believe that what we need to shape an environment where of safety, where people can speak yeah. to us. What a start, man. I mean, you're, you're owning it from the beginning. You're also addressing problems that haven't even happened yet. Just based on who you are, based on who they are, you're saying, Hey, this is likely to occur. And you're proactively creating a, a strategy to successfully resolve potential issues. It's amazing. And the, and the opposite of that is you get, you get managers or, or owners who, or, or people in general, they just, they say, well, that's just the way I am. I'm just a, I'm just a demanding domineering boss. And if they can't deal with it. Out they go. Yeah. Well, guess what? You're going to be in contract or prison because nobody's going to want to work for you. Yeah. Period. Yeah. You can do that. You can, you can do that all day long. There's going to be one brain choice. at that company. Yeah. It's one brain. Yeah, man. I love that. So, you know how I like to sidetrack you, Jason, because you drop these things. I do it almost every single time I think. And it's always, it's, it's oftentimes related to your sales process. I find it fascinating. Uh, I know you, you have this stuff really, really well built out and really well executed. You actually conduct regular sales trainings, you, you have a, a whole onboarding. I mean, it's, it's far more extensive than, than almost any other painting company I've ever encountered, really. Um, so you had talked about how you guys try to make sure that every decision maker is present at the meeting. My question to you is, what do you do? I, I have two questions, so I'll start with that. First one is, what do you do if you're on the call and, and they say, oh, he's not going, going to be home? Let's say you're, you're speaking with Ms. Smith. Uh, Mr. Smith's not home. He's away on business. Oh, well, well, let's push it back to Mr. Smith. Oh, well, he he's actually away for several weeks. He's not going to be home for some time. You can come out and, and, and I'll take a look at what you have. How do you handle something like that? Well, at the end of the day, we're there to serve them and we're not going to demand and require mm -hmm. that, that they're there. Now, some okay. companies do, yep. we don't, we, but we at least try and we want them to see the value of having the other, the other spouse or the other interested party there. And we, you know, we, we, our call center, we have some, uh, uh, what we might call rebuttals if they sure. say he's not going to be there oh, or, or they might say, oh, well, he, he, he works late. Oh, you know, we, we also offer uh, evenings and weekends with Thursday or Saturday morning work better for you. Give them an alternate choice. Sure. Sometimes they're going to say that. And at some point they, they might just say, look, you're going to have to meet with me. Okay. Hey, I'm so, man, I'm sorry. Yeah, absolutely. Let's, let's find a time on the calendar. Yeah. And, and then at the same time, you know, when our, when our project consultant gets out there, um, they're going to, they're going to see that, wow, that we really do need the other person here for some of these decisions. And so they're going to try to set a, what we call a be back. And, and, and if they can't get a be back set with a second appointment with both parties, we may even say, um, uh, Brandon, do you think you do you do you think you could get her on the phone real quick, hmm. and we can just go over some of these and and uh, you know if if she likes what if you guys are good we just go and get you guys on the schedule that we don't have to wait till you know wait so long. Yeah. So what one of the things I want to mention is you're saying this kind of casually, but I know the way that you operate, this stuff's dialed in. So when with, for people listening, it, it's not oh well if this happens what do we do? It's not a game time decision. There's going to be a set series. It's it's like decision trees. Certain things are going to happen. They're really not that many are insane. Typically, what do you do when those things happen? And for you, when you go out and there happens to only be one decision maker, but there's another one, and then you try to try to connect 
again, and it seems like that that's uh, creating difficulties, then you'll just go ahead and try to make the sale over the phone. But I think it's important for people listening, map out those processes. Don't just leave it. It goes back to the processes, the systems uh, we talked about, I believe in episode, that episode three, I think it was episode three, um, systems and processes, have that stuff mapped out. Don't just leave it to the, you know, the project consultant or estimator's discretion. Don't, don't just leave it to the project manager's discretion. Map out the decision tree. If you encounter something and it's new, say your, your company has never encountered this particular thing, well, then go ahead and make an SOP for it. Figure out, it might not be how you handled it then, but figure out the best way to handle it. Go ahead and document it. Make sure you teach everybody that. That's, that's it. There's no, you're not going to encounter anything new. You're going to encounter yeah. some things more than others. But if, if we know we're going to get, you know, one out of 20 times, we're going to get this run into this problem, this stall, this objection, whatever it is, why not pre-plan what we're going to say? You know, and it's, it, and at the end of the day, you know, you, you look at people that are master at their whatever, whether it's the quarterback or the basketball player, they make it look easy. Why do they make it look easy? Because they've practiced and practiced and practiced all the time. So to them, it's, it's, I don't want to say it's on autopilot. They're having to put their grit and their effort into it, but they're not having to think. Yeah. They're not having to think because they've, they've done it on the practice field so many times. Yeah. It's the same concept as objection handling, right? You're going to, you're going to meet the same objections over and over again. Well, I'm, I'm not sure that seems expensive. Well, you didn't, you didn't demonstrate the value. So what do you do if, if they say, oh, that seems expensive or, well, now might not be the right time. Well, what do you do, right? If there are all these objections, probably most of them are not actually the problem. So you, you learn to actually figure out what the, what the real problem That's is behind right. them and how to uncover them. But then you have things with project management. Oh no, there, there was a mess created in the house or, or the, the project's running behind schedule. Well, what do you do? So you can build these SOPs for all the, all these um, potential scenarios in every aspect of your business. 100%. Now let's just say that, let's just say there is a mess in the house and you've caused a huge delay for the homeowner and a huge inconvenience. Okay. Some, some personality styles, they just want to go clean up the mess. When in reality, you need to listen to the client and talk to them and repair the relationship that was broken with them before you go clean up the mess. So yeah. sometimes you need to deal with that. And depending on what your personality style is, you may just want to think that, Hey, I'm going to fix the problem. There's two problems. There's the mess. And then there's the stress you caused to the homeowner. Those are two different things. Yep. And, and, and having the, uh, you know, uh, I guess the emotional intelligence to see what's going on there, which one of these do I need to fix first? Yeah. And I think it goes back to you saying, you know, stage one, the beginning is the widget. It's the thing, you know, you've compared it to roofing, gutter, whatever it's painting here. It's the thing. It's, it's your entry ticket to, into the game. If you can't do that, you can't play the game. But people then get wrapped up and this idea, okay, there's a mess or the, the project's delayed or the estimator's 30 minutes late, whatever it is. Well, then you think, you, oh, you just need to fix the thing. The thing went wrong, but you're not in, you're not selling the thing. What you're selling is the experience, the relationship. That's what you're selling. So that's actually what you need to fix. The thing maybe caused it, but, but we actually have to focus on is that relationship. Of course, the thing also needs to be repaired. It's both. Yeah. You're right. It's both. Love it, man. It's always an education. So we did we did shoot episode four in person. I I love our in-person work. That was a lot of fun. Well, it's it's it, it is always super fun. I really enjoy doing it in person. And then you don't get a better backdrop than me because you don't get your whole studio. It evens the playing field between us. <laughs> There's oh, that D goodness. coming out, right? Yesterday's Brandon, man, he is, he is awful, but today's Brandon, he's doing better. <laughs> <laughs> the self-competition. Hey man, you, you are, uh, you are inspiring. You're enlightening. I really, really love everything you're doing. Uh, what, what other, do you have anything else you want to add uh, to disc as we come up at the, at the end of this hour? Just get started. Just get started. Read it, read it again. Give it a few days, read it again, give it to your people and read it and understand them. And you're, you're, you're going to have a great start right there. Yeah. I love it, man. So we have episode six coming up. This is the longest series that we've ever done um, by far because you have a lot of great content to share. So I'm just super excited for that one. Jason, thank you for your time. Thank you for your colorful, colorful shirt for everything about you. Appreciate your energy, man, your positivity. And, and thank you so much. Man, I'm glad, proud to be here. Thank you for having me today, Brandon.
If you want to learn more about the topics we discussed in this podcast and how you can use them to grow your painting business, visit paintermarketingpros.com forward slash podcast for free training, as well as the ability to schedule a personalized strategy session for your painting company. Again, that URL is paintermarketingpros.com forward slash podcast. Hey there, painting company owners. If you enjoyed today's episode, make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Give us your feedback. Let us know how we did. And also, if you're interested in taking your painting business to the next level, make sure you visit the Painter Marketing Pros website at paintermarketingpros.com to learn more about our services. You can also reach out to me directly by emailing me at brandon at paintermarketingpros.com and I can give you personalized advice on growing your painting business. Until next time, keep growing.